NASA is celebrating a major success. It safely landed its most advanced rover on Mars. It's the ninth successful landing on Mars since the 1970s, all completed by the United States. Perseverance is already sending back pictures and will soon begin its mission to answer a question that scientists have pondered for ages. CBS News correspondent Carter Evans has more. Catch on confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. Perseverance stuck the landing. These new images are proof of life for a mission now searching for life on Mars. Liftoff. The seven month journey leading to a frantic final seven minutes. The rover hurtling towards Mars at 12,000 miles per hour, its heat shield surviving temperatures hotter than lava, deploying a giant parachute, then firing up eight mini rockets as a sky crane lowered the rover to the Martian surface. The landing spot Jezera Crater is so hazardous with rocks and steep cliffs, it had never been tried before. Why are scientists so interested in that crater? So what this mission is about is finding extinct life. It's a place where there used to be a lake. It's a crater, and if there's ancient life, we think that's the highest likelihood of finding it. Now, Perseverance and its companion helicopter ingenuity may finally determine if life ever existed on the Red Planet. We are a nation of, the nation of explorers. It's kind of in our DNA. And so this is just part of moving America forward. This is a scale model of Perseverance. It's about the size of a small car. And once they get the mast up like this, they'll be able to get some detailed images of the planet. By the way, we were here shortly after the landing when President Biden called to offer his congratulations to the NASA team. Lana? Very cool, Carter. Thank you. For more now, I am joined by CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood from the Kennedy Space Center. Bill, always great to talk to you. Let's let's go ahead and say Perseverance, now the fifth rover NASA has landed on Mars since 1997. But this landing was the most difficult. Why was it so challenging and what yeah. challenges still lie ahead? Well, you know, it was most difficult because they picked a landing site that offered the maximum possibility of discovering past signs of microbial life. I mean, the goal here is to, is to specifically look for fossils, if you will, of microbial creatures that might have lived several billion years ago at the bottom of a now vanished lake. Well, getting into that crater means you had to navigate really a pinpoint landing. You had to dodge the cliffs of the crater. You had to dodge the cliffs in front of a big delta where a river once emptied into this crater. You had to avoid sand dunes that you could get trapped in and large boulders. And if you landed on one, I mean, that could hang it up and you don't rove. Uh, so it was extremely difficult to come in here. They developed some advanced uh, software navigation techniques uh, to make sure they hit that landing, and they did. It was really remarkable to watch because they absolutely stuck the landing in the most difficult place they've ever tried to go to on Mars. So incredible. And the Jezero Crater was actually believed to be a giant lake, um, and Perseverance is searching yeah. for signs of ancient life there. Obviously, we understand how, how ancient water bodies um, hold, on this planet at least, fossilized proof of previous life. But is that the same on Mars? What, what are some of the signs of life that NASA is actually looking for there? Right, right. Well, you know, it's interesting because they can tell from orbit that Jezero Crater, where Perseverance landed, once had a lake in it about the size of Lake Tahoe, hundreds and hundreds of feet deep. You can see a river channel that cuts through the wall of the crater that would have fed the water into the crater, uh, depositing sediments that then fanned out in a broad delta. You can see all of that. So there's no question there was water in this crater in the distant past. They're estimating about three and a half billion years ago. And if you look back at Earth at the same time, the oldest undisputed signs of life on Earth are the remains of, of single-celled organisms that form these deposits called stromatolites. You can see those in, in 3.5 billion year old rock in Western Australia, for example. Uh, so the idea is, okay, so on Earth, life was flourishing in warm, wet environments. Well, it turns out there was a similar environment on Mars at roughly the same time. Could life have evolved there as well? Uh, so that's what Perseverance is trying to find out. They're going to look at the deposits that were laid down on the bottom of this ancient lake. Uh, presumably, if there were microbial creatures, you know, the remnants would have drifted to the bottom and been left in those sediments, and perhaps uh, they can find some concrete evidence 
uh, that we're not alone, if you want to think about it like that, that life could have arisen on a different planet, and by extension, planets across the cosmos. Bill, you know, that's exactly how I want to be thinking about it. I'm so interested in, the, in this question about life on Mars. I have so many more questions for you, but I only have time for one more. So um, let's just talk about the future of Perseverance, because this is, some, this is hopefully a multi-phased Mars mission stretching over several years. What else does NASA have planned? Well, you're right. This is the first phase in a multi-mission project to bring samples back to Earth. So if Perseverance works as advertised, it's going to pick up rock and soil samples, it's going to package them in these small lipstick-sized containers, and then deposit them on the surface. And then later this decade, another rover is going to land nearby, go pick up those samples, put them on board a small rocket, launch them up into Mars orbit, and then yet another spacecraft, this one built in Europe, is going to carry those samples back to Earth. So sometime around 2030, um, who knows where we'll be then, but these samples are going to come back. And that's what's going to be the definitive evidence for life or not life, at least in Jezero Crater, subjecting those rocks and soils to detailed laboratory analysis, kind of thing you can only do on Earth. A little Martian assembly line there. Oh, I'm so excited. Bill Harwood, thank you. Sure thing.